Ten years after humans revolutionized warfare in space, they were revolutionized in combat on a more personal level. They introduced the concept of a boarding action, which is utterly and completely insane, but is yielding troves of information on the conquerors. Their ability to fight conqueror forces on planetary surfaces, though, has been shocking. To date, all grand actions against the conquerors have either been defensive, typically buying time for evacuations, or raids intended to extract or destroy higher value targets. The humans insisted that the Interstellar Council could retake an entire planet with their help. A whole planet. Which is why I'm in the drop bay of a human planetary assault ship, at the back of a formation of human marines. My anxiety management implants were maxed out. The IC wanted observers embedded with the human marines, which meant they needed individuals from species that could keep up with humans and had a similar enough evolutionary background to comprehend their methods. Which is why I'm here, trying not to tremble so badly that it could be seen for the obscene amount of equipment I'm wearing. I'm a Kirill. Like humans, we're bipedal. Like humans, we're predators. Although in our case, that meant our ancestors opportunistically ate the occasional small animal. Like humans, we evolved as a prey species. We have higher than IC average endurance, though it's geared towards hopping across the broken terrain of our birth world, not the stunning and terrifying relentless endurance of humans. We have binocular vision as an adaptation to our terrain. Jumping from rock to rock requires precise depth perception. We're still struggling to keep up in the Marines' training exercises, but between the extreme conditioning and extreme augmentations, I was close. The bay doors opened. The atmosphere held in with a force field. The humans are insane. The rehearsed chatter of pre-drop rituals were made. I chimed in when I was required to stay my readiness. Humans are insane and suicidal. We rose off the deck, standing on another force field emitted from the plating under us. Humans just want to kill themselves in new and interesting ways. I held off the rising panic by looking at our target planet, ignoring the sporadic explosions of the space battle we were in the midst of. The jump light glowed red. Not that I can see red, Gunny told me. An atmosphere was pumped into the drop bay, raising the air pressure. It's the goal of every human to die in a way no human has ever died before. The force were between us and Void flashed opaquely three times. And collapsed. An instant later, before the inertia of objects at rest could be overcome, the force field beneath our feet collapsed. I experienced the briefest and wildest acceleration conceivable, and we were flung planetward. My fellow marines, they had claimed me as one of their own. Humans are intensely social pack hunters. Kirill are almost equally social. Were able to talk me through the panic as we hurtled through hard vacuum. And two were about to atmosphere. We survived what was basically an intentional hull breach using primitive human tech, but there was no way we could use it to survive atmospheric entry and landing without a spaceship. Humans are willing to kill their own people and allies to play a practical joke. My panic and anxiety rose with the temperature of my suit as we fell. The surface burned off, creating a cloud of particulates that hid us from conqueror sensors. I was going to cook to death, but then the suit's force fields kicked on and formed a needle-like aerodynamic shape that initially let me freefall, then spread out like a parachute that allowed the reinforced suit legs to absorb the shock of landing. The suit, used up from getting me to the ground, fell off of me. Everything had worked exactly like it had in the simulations, except the simulations hadn't been so terrifying. Everyone had made it down, unharmed. We fell into a patrol formation and followed the route to our objective. We were able to cover the distance in the allotted time without tripping over any Conqueror forces, thanks to our orbital observation. I should tell you about Conqueror ground forces. Primarily the Conquerors are slavers. With a mix of brain implants and conditioning, they gain total control of conquered populations. No conquered individual has ever been successfully recovered from being conquered, and as such there are no civilians. The entire population is actively trying to kill you. Then there are the conquerors themselves. Slightly taller than the average human, gaunt and a sickly dark colour, they are harsh bipeds with twisted, hateful and brutish features. One marine said they look like tall, skinny zombie chimps. I was then informed that zombie chimps are a creature native to the human birth world, and are known to be incredibly resistant to injury. Slow moving, utterly carnivorous, and her highly toxic feces. The Marines enjoy telling me the myriad details of that particular fiend, though I don't understand the accompanying laughter. We had taken up our positions overlooking our objective, a communications hub that coordinating the local defence grid. Unfortunately, things stopped going according to plan here, as the Concord had fortified far more heavily than our intel had suggested. Our only option was to call in an orbital strike. Instead, our leader, Lieutenant, Dan Taylor took this in stride, 
and Millie altered the original plan. Instead of having our two heavy weapons sighted to hold the enemy position in a crossfire, they were both going to be sighted to support an advance from a single direction. Two squads were bound towards the target, one providing covering fire while the other advanced, and the heavy weapons kept the enemy suppressed. The concept of suppressing fire bears contemplation. The remaining two squads would each hold a flank and pin down enemy reinforcements. I've been in ground fights against the Conquerors, including raids on occupied planets. I actually have quite a bit of experience fighting them, and am considered effective at doing so. Humans are on a completely different level of competence in regard to organised killing. The sheer amount of gunfire is astonishing. The fact that they're willing to run through their own fire, trusting their comrades not to shoot them by accident, is astonishing. That they're capable of doing so successfully boggles the mind. As we advanced, we tore for the conquered. These were Sakarians, a live elephant species, almost human height but far thinner. My particle accelerator popped them. The human's rifle shredded them. We made it to the structure with minimal losses, and I took my place at the rear of the stack. Even if I had the necessary depth of training, I lacked the laser-fast reaction times of the humans, and speed is the difference between life and death in CQB. The breaching charge tore a hole in the wall when we poured into the building. The room was a strobing, rolling wall of concussions too loud to hear, and blood. Zakarians were scattered everywhere, dead and dying, but the humans were already pushing through. We swept and cleared the structure. Human CQB tactics need to be adopted icy wide, and as we were uploading the mower onto the defence grid, we got the call that enemy reinforcements had arrived. We held off wave after wave. We were down to the last few magazines of ammunition. I had six shots remaining. Human and Kirill physiology make it impossible to effectively use each other's weapons. Lieutenant Dan Taylor told us to repair the Bay of Nets, which was obviously a translation error, because the humans pulled knives off their gear and stuck them on the ends of their rifles. Who else but humans would coin the saying, don't bring a knife to a gunfight, then not only bring a knife to a gunfight, but put the knife on their gun so they can fight using both with maximum convenience? No one. Humans are wonderful, vicious barbarians, and I was happy to be surrounded by them. The enemy wave came. We expended the last of our ammo. We charged and meet them. The humans with their bayonets, me with her borrowed tomahawk, a horrifyingly effective weapon, and at first held our ground. Then the conquerors joined the fight. Unable to shoot us through their slaves, they waded into the melee. Hand-to-hand -hand fighting with a conqueror is a losing proposition, but again, human grit and physiology surprised. We took more losses before follow-on forces made it to our location and routed the enemy. I lost an arm and sustained several other serious injuries, but will otherwise make a full recovery. Lieutenant Dan Taylor, who lost both of his legs, has recommended me for a number of human military awards for my actions, including fighting and killing a conqueror with my tomahawk. Gunny told me it's mine now, who was about to kill a wounded marine. Estimates are that we killed a total of 632 enemy fighters, including 17 conquerors, but the cost of 7 dead and 18 wounded marines, myself included. The humans are right. We can take our worlds back.